Welcome to Paradigm Shift Parenting, a podcast for women who make their lives better by first making themselves better. At Paradigm Shift Parenting, we believe that self-improvement is the highest form of self-care. Each episode, we're going to either shift our mindset about something, explore the myth that motherhood and martyrdom are synonymous, replace the oh-so-trendy victimhood mentality with a healthy dose of accountability and responsibility, or simply explore the shared experiences of modern motherhood. I'm your imperfect host, Binky Bell, and I'm glad you're here. Welcome back to another episode. I hope this episode finds you well, safe, happy, healthy, all of those things. Uh, so for the last two weeks, I've kind of been sitting back and observing, like all of you, what's going on in the country, in the world. I've been paying attention to what is taking place on social media, what everybody's talking about. And I'm not an expert on anything, but my diagnosis is that things are kind of messed up for everybody, for most people. So today I want to shut out some of the noise. I want to take a minute to slow down, calm the noise, the chatter, and give you three things that you can focus on during this period of time. I want to focus on three mindset shifts, three paradigm shifts, if you will, that can take place during this pandemic if you need them to. We're going to talk about motherhood mindset. We're going to talk about being an excuse opportunist because I see a lot of that going on. And we're going to talk about back to basics. With all three of these things, I'm just going to invite you to explore where you stand with each one, take a minute to explore how you feel about each one, and just do a self-assessment. See if you need to adjust things, see if you need to change your mindset, right? And then adjust as needed. Um, Let's start from the beginning. Way, way, way beginning, guys. What is a paradigm? Um, For those of you who don't know, those of you who are new around here, paradigms are beliefs, thoughts, ways of life that you just believe to be true, you do without question, you don't challenge them. They're your default mindset, your unconscious ways of thinking and being that you never really challenge because these are things that you've adopted from your own childhood. They're things, ideas, beliefs that you very easily internalize um, from society, things that we just absorb and accept to be true. We never challenge them. They're often the things that we say that's just the way that I am, right? And we don't look any further. It's very easy to live unconsciously, unaware of what we do and why we do it, unaware of whether or not what we're doing feels aligned with the truest expressions of ourselves. And I feel like right now during this pandemic, during this period of self-isolation, social distancing, um, quarantining, all of that, I feel like it's a really huge opportunity Um, It's a huge invitation to sit down and figure out which paradigms we've been holding on to that we could probably let go. What mindsets we have that we could probably shift. I feel like right now, for a lot of us, our parts of our shadow selves are being highlighted a little bit. We have um, a lot of our old problems, old histories bubbling up for us. Um, But I feel like we're also being gifted this huge opportunity to start dealing with that, to start focusing on it and start seeing where we can heal these areas. We're being, a lot of us are being gifted a lot of time. We got a lot of time right now to start working on these things. And I feel like it would be good to take advantage of that, right? So while all this has been going on, like I said, I've identified three areas that we could spend some time thinking about. So let's just get into it. Um, The first one is back to basics. From the beginning, I've been saying that this feels like an opportunity to get back to basics. Um, to cut the fluff, cut the excess, cut the busy schedules, um, tone everything down and focus on what's immediate and what's important. And for most of us, I think it goes the self, the family, the community in that order because we're going to focus on the self and everything from there will expand out and improve if you're improving the self. And again, this is a really, really good opportunity to focus on the self. And if you're a person like me who has a history with mental illness, with depression, um, anxiety, things like that, this is a really good opportunity to make sure that your self-care routines are in place and they are solid. Because a lot of us are probably finding that our normal coping mechanisms, if you're a person who goes out and shops a lot, if you're a person who kind of dulls the mind with social encounters and stuff, a lot of these things are being limited and 
we're being forced to just be with ourselves. And for a lot of people, if you have um, um, emotional, mental health issues, that can be really uncomfortable. It can be really uncomfortable to suddenly be forced to just sit with yourself and your thoughts, right? Um, but again, good opportunity to start dealing with these things. And what I what I'm doing right now is focusing always on what I can control. Um, I can't control what everybody else in the world is doing. I can't control anything other than me. Um, and the things that I have to focus on are controlling myself because I have a tendency to engage in a lot of really negative self-harming behaviors. So I have to focus on making sure that um, I'm eating well, making sure I'm exercising still, uh, making sure that I'm limiting the amount of alcohol that I'm engaging in um, and consuming. Uh, things like that are going to keep my mental health well. Um, I see a lot of people kind of starting to slack in this area and I don't think it's going to be good for anybody, especially whenever we're all closed in together and it's going to start to affect your marriage, it's going to start to affect the relationship that you have with your children. Um, it's going to affect a lot. And like I always say, it's got to start with you. You have to start taking care of yourself if you haven't already. And you have to continue to take care of yourself even during times of crisis. And this is why routines in your daily life are so good. Um, if you're somebody who like me spends time alone at home, most of the time anyways, um, not much has changed for you. But if you're a little bit of a social butterfly, Again, this would be a good time to start working on your routines, start making sure that you have a solid routine and don't let um, your day just be left to chance. You can't just float around through your day. You still get ready, still make yourself feel good and look good because that's going to be what's best for you and ultimately what is best for everybody. So to wrap up the first part, back to basics, focus on yourself the most basic self-care that you can employ, you should. Basics, keep everything simple, everything small. Like I said, we are, all the fluff has been cut. All of the birthday parties, the sports events, all of these things that we do, we fill our schedules up with, um, those have been eliminated and so many people talk about how busy they are. Um, how they feel like they're just spinning their wheels, running, running, running all day long. This is your chance to stop. This is a gift. You've been given a gift. Um, that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It can be very hard to confront yourself, to suddenly be stuck with your thoughts, stuck with your choices, right? So it's not going to be, um, it's not always going to be pleasant, but I think it's necessary and I think it can be really, really good. So hold on to that thought. Think of that. Write down um, what your basics are. What's your basic model of self-care? What's your basic routine look like? Um, and focus on the basics of every day. And if you can grow from there, that's great. But at least you'll always have the basics to fall back on. Okay, number two, being an excuse opportunist. Um, I am like, a, I have like a PhD in this. Like if there is an excuse, I'm going to take it. Uh, and this is, I see this going around a lot right now on social media. There's like two camps of people. There's the people who like me are saying, you can take advantage of this time. You have a lot of time now. You can do the things that you wanted to do. You can start writing that book. You can start the podcast, start the YouTube channel. You can, you can start doing the project that you have been putting off, right? Um, and now's a really, really great time because the number one excuse that people give is they don't have time. I'm busy. I have to work. I'm busy. I have a shit ton of kids. I don't have time. And now here's the gift of time. You have a lot of time now. Um, and everybody, half the people on my social media are saying, yes, take advantage of it. It's so good. Do the things. And then there's this other half on social media who suddenly are like, they're so um, against other people's progress. They're like, you do not have to do anything during this period. If all you want to do is sit down and eat chips and watch Netflix, that's fine. Um, and I, I mean, that's fine if that's really what you want to do, if that's what's going to make you feel good and safe and um, happy, then by all means do that. But I think if you're like me, 
um, then you're what I call an excuse opportunist. So you will take any little bit of permission, um, any excuse, and run with it, right? That's what I do. And I'm in this constant struggle every day where I'm like, oh, things are crazy. Like my schedule is out of whack. Like things just feel different. Maybe I could just start day drinking and eating nachos. Like That would be fun. I could do that. Um, and I'll just take any little thing and I'll use that as an excuse. And I just encourage you to be aware of what your intentions are right now. A lot of us have health goals, fitness goals. A lot of us have um, cooking goals, hobby goals. Uh, and if you are like me and you feel within yourself that you are a little bit of an excuse opportunist, um, just sit down and be really honest with what your intentions are. Because again, everything comes back to intention, living an intentional life. So if you are choosing to lay low, be less productive, um, maybe eat outside of your normal routine, normal regimen, um, if you're doing that with intention, then that's probably fine. But if you're doing it out of fear, if you're doing it out of um, skirting the obligations and commitments that you have made to yourself, you might want to check that because this is going to end, right? Life is going to go back to normal or we're going to find a new normal. And where are you going to be on the other side of it? How far away from your goals are you going to be on the other side of it? And that's what I think we need to keep our focus on um, because it can be really easy to lose sight of what our goals are. And we don't want to do that because, again, whenever we come out of it, um, how good are you going to feel knowing that you ate chips and watched the end of Netflix? <laughs> um, for most people, for me, I wouldn't feel very good. So keep track of the basics. Keep track of where your intention lies with what you're doing. Again, you don't have to use this time to write the next bestseller. You don't have to become the next big YouTube star, um, but we can still take small steps towards our growth, right? And that's okay, that's okay. Okay, now the third thing, which is the biggest thing for me, obviously, um, is motherhood. Motherhood during all of this. Ah, reclaiming motherhood. Here's the deal. A lot of women who are not used to being at home all day with their children are suddenly forced to be at home all day with their kids. Um, that is going to change the dynamic of the relationship. Um, and like I, I've said before, like this isn't like the time to be really smug about that. If you're like me, somebody who spends your time with your kids all the time, um, it can be really easy to be smug and like, look at these women who are suddenly like floundering and don't know how to talk to their kids. Um, let's try to keep that to a minimum because that's not helping anybody. But if you are a woman who is in this position, suddenly spending a lot of time with your kids and you're not used to that, um, now is a perfect opportunity to reclaim motherhood. And what I mean by that is we have the opportunity now to evaluate what our current paradigm is about who you are as a mother. Um, a lot of times we get in these mindset loops of like, I'm the strict mom, I'm the, I'm, I'm the casual mom. I'm the mom who says the F word and drinks a bunch of wine. Um, we can look at what our model of motherhood has been, compare it to what we're forced to experience now and see what pieces should stay and what should fall away. You have a really, really beautiful opportunity to reclaim your definition, your expression of your experience of motherhood and that is a powerful thing so if you are struggling right now if you suddenly feel like you don't know what to do you're suddenly thrust into the role of home educator which you didn't sign up to be um, you're thrust into the role of a stay-at-home mom which you had no intention of being but here you are I think that you can still make the best of it. You can look towards people to resources, people who are succeeding in those areas of life and you can draw inspiration from them. Um, I would encourage everybody to really think back on 
how you define your experience of motherhood. Um, what parts really aren't working for you? If you identify yourself as the strict mother, the mother who keeps a very, very clean house all the time, but you're suddenly here with your kids all day and they're making messes, maybe that is a paradigm that you can shift and let go of a little bit. This is an opportunity to grow in areas that are really uncomfortable. And the thing about parenting is whenever you have children, they are going to shine a light on all the parts of yourself that you are very uncomfortable with. They are going to highlight the areas that you need to heal. It's up to you to be perceptive, to be receptive to those and do the internal work. Start asking these hard questions, start figuring out, are these rules and standards, are they arbitrary? Can I let go of them? Can I find peace and harmony and flow in my relationship with my children without being domineering while keeping my sanity? These are important questions to ask. They're important thought experiments to have. Um, and I just, I can't say it enough. This is a gift. It's an opportunity. It's so wonderful. Now, while we're talking about motherhood and reclaiming, I want to encourage you again to go through your social media because we all have a lot of extra time. We're spending a lot of time on social media right now. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but like everyone is live on Instagram all the time now because we're just stuck at home. But now is a really, really good time to pay attention, spend a day, spend a morning, an afternoon going through your social media, what comes up on your feed and start making cuts. Things that encourage you to have a disparaging mental attitude towards your spouse and towards your children should probably go because every one of those memes, every piece of content that you see that encourages you to start drinking, to um, call your kids assholes, to make fun of your husband for pooping too long. The, or, I mean, that one's like, I mean, because husbands do like poop for like a really long time, but things that are um, actively encouraging you to be a jerk to your kids and your spouse, those are areas that we can very easily prune. Those things, whenever we see them, they plant seeds in our mind. And remember what I said about paradigms, their beliefs and attitudes that are very easily adopted from society. And the perception of society that we get is very tailored to what we see on social media. So these things, they're little seeds and they start, they plant in your mind and in your mindset and your heart um, and they just grow and they fester. And suddenly it's just very easy to start identifying with a culture and expression of motherhood that maybe you aren't really aligned with but it's easy to accept because it's easier to call your kids and your husband's assholes than it is to heal the relationship mm. and that you know it's, that's not good right we're trying to build a happy healthy community and it starts in the home so let's do that again okay back to basics <laughs> being an excuse opportunist motherhood reclaiming your expression your experience of motherhood these are things that we can do right now in the midst of this pandemic that will leave us better on the other side of it and that's awesome that's hopeful that's powerful as always thank you for listening please feel free to share this episode if you happen to like it come by my instagram let me know what you thought let's keep the conversation going i'm going to be making posts about this episode all week so feel free to join me in the comments and I will see you guys in the next episode.